Hi folks, today we are going to go over a comparative advantage problem. We're going to solve for a compare advantage question when the question itself involves units of input rather than units of output. Thus far, the comparative advantage problems that we have discussed have all involved units of output. So Mr. Gilmore writing tests and me grading papers or uh, Japan producing a certain number of cars and trucks and then the United States producing a number of cars and trucks. These are all output units. Sometimes, and this is occasionally on both the AP and the IB, questions involve units of input. So in this case, um, Tony and Chris are both farmers and they are devoting a certain number of their acreage to the production of apples and pears. So the question isn't about apples and pears, it's about acreage. That's a unit of input. Sometimes the question involves the number of robotic arms needed in a factory in order to produce a car or a truck or a certain number of cars or a certain number of trucks. So the question wouldn't be about trucks and cars, it would be about the robotic arm needed to produce those trucks and cars. So we have to be a little careful here. One of the first questions you've got to ask yourself is, is this a question of input? or output. In most cases it's about output, but I want to take you through an example of uh, how we solve for uh, input rather than output. So here we go. We, uh, we first make a note of, of the units involved. This question is about acreage. It's not about apples and pears yet. Second step is making it into a problem that involves apples and pears. And so what we have to do is convert units of input into units of output. So we take a look at Tony. Tony's got five acres, which will produce him one bushel of apples. What happens when he only produces one acre? That's really what we want to get it down to. So we uh, we divide by five in order to, or to get that. So that means we're going to have one acre is going to give us a fifth of a bushel of apples. Two acres of pears to or two acres in order to produce a bushel of pears, and that means if we only have one acre, we're only going to be producing a half a bushel of pears. Look at Chris now. Chris is sitting on six acres, which is producing him a bushel of apples. So that means if we only have one acre, it's going to give us a six a bushel of apples. Likewise, three three acres to produce a bushel of pears, and that means if one each acre is only producing us a third of a bushel of pears. Once we've made those conversions, we want to write all of them down. Uh, but then, then we're now that we've got units of output, we're ready to go ahead and analyze the problem as as if it were just a normal output problem. This intermediate step, this step two, is is the one that confuses students, and, and it's it's one uh, that that uh, that is is problematic. So again, just be aware that if it's a question involving input, you've got to do the second step before you move on to the third step. Third step, fairly straightforward. We want to figure out now the opportunity cost, so we take a look at Tony's one-fifth of an apple there. Uh, we want to make that a whole apple, so we multiply by five. So we've got one apple. How many pairs is he giving up? Well, we multiply then this one-half a pair by five, which gives us five seconds, which is two and a half. So for every apple that Tony produces, he's giving up two and a half pairs. Over here, we've got uh, Tony or with a half a pair, so we want to make that whole, so we multiply it by two, one pair, multiply then this by two, the apple bit by two, that gives us two fifths, which means one pair is, uh, he gives up two fifths of an apple when he produces one pair. Six, he's got one, uh, Chris has got one sixth of an apple, so we multiply by six to get one apple, multiply our number of pairs over here, one third by, uh, by six, which gives us six thirds, which is two, so for every apple Chris produces, he's going to give up two pairs. Over here, we've got a third of a pair. To make that a whole, we want to multiply by three. Take that across, multiply one six by three, and get one half. So that means that when Chris produces a pair, he gives up an apple, a half an apple. So once we've got then our, our, our units and our opportunity costs, we can then compare them. We take a look at apples, and we see that Chris's opportunity costs are lower. He only gives up two pairs when he produces an apple, whereas Tony produces, gives up two and a half pairs. We look over here at pairs and we see that uh, Tony's opportunity costs are a little less when he produces a pair. He only gives up two fifths of an apple, whereas Chris gives up a whole half of an apple. So we make a note of that and we've got an answer then. Uh, Chris has a lower opportunity cost in apples and therefore he should specialize in producing those. Tony has lower opportunity costs in the production of pairs, and so he should specialize and produce those.
if the two of them get together then they, they can find a trade agreement that's mutually beneficial they can go into business together for example and they have a very lucrative fruit export company i hope that's clear we'll have a couple of other questions involving units of input just so that you're confident with them and i'll see you soon bye